Hi, I'm Mel Janelle, and today I will be discussing landmark defamation cases for the civil tort of defamation, libel, and slander. The first case I will discuss is New York Times Company v. Sullivan. The parties in this case are the New York Times newspaper, four black civil rights ministers, and Montgomery, Alabama City Commissioner L.B. Sullivan. Sullivan accused the newspaper, New York Times, of falsely publishing information in the form of a newspaper ad that was published on behalf of four black civil rights ministers. The newspaper ad alleged that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s then arrest for perjury by the Montgomery Police Department was part of a strategic campaign by the department to, to destroy Dr. King's efforts to integrate public facilities and encourage blacks to vote. As commissioner of the city of Montgomery, Sullivan felt this damaged his reputation personally as he was responsible for supervising the actions of the police department, which is government agency. He filed a libel action against the newspaper and four black ministers who endorsed the advertisement. The jury found in favor of the commissioner and awarded him $500,000 on the basis that the advertisement included some factual errors in regard to police action directed against students who participated in civil rights demonstrations. These untruthful statements ultimately nullify their defense of truthfulness. The elements of defamation and libel are met if the defendant published the statement, if the defendant uttered or distributed to at least one person other than the plaintiff, then this requirement has been met. The statement must also be about the individual bringing the lawsuit. Regardless if the plaintiff is, ex is named explicitly, if there's enough identifying information that those who know the person will recognize the statement as being about him or her, then it is considered to be about the individual. The statement must be harmful to the reputation of another and that it cannot merely be an insult. The defamatory statement is a false statement that exposes a person to hatred, ridicule, or contempt, lowers him in the esteem of his peers, causes him to be shunned, or injures him in his business or trade. Depending on the circumstances, the plaintiff will either need to prove that defendant acted negligently if the plaintiff is a private figure or with actual malice if the plaintiff is a public or off public figure or official the case was utterly settled in the appeals court of alabama in 1964 with a reversal of the ru ruling from the lower court and the finding in favor of the new york times and the ministers the ruling was considered a precedent setting case in defense of first amendment constitutional free speech rights based on the fact that the commissioner sullivan was a government official and the United States protects the publication of all statements, even false ones, about the conduct of public officials except when statements are made with actual malice, and that is without the knowledge that they are false or with reckless disregard to truth or falsity. Alabama's state's, uh, state law was deemed in violation of the constitutional safeguards for freedom of speech and press. These guarantees by the First and Fourteenth Amendment of the Constitution protects citizens in a libel action brought by a public official against critics of his official conduct. The petitioner, the New York Times, appealed a judgment from the Alabama Supreme Court awarding the responder, Commissioner LBJ Sullivan, damages in a civil libel action. Uh, and that resulted ultimately in them winning. So they won on appeal even though they had initially lost in the lower court. The next landmark case I will discuss is Gertz versus Welch. This case is important because it highlights the protections the Constitution gives to private citizens against def defamatory falsehoods. In this case, we have uh, a Chicago police officer, Richard Nuccio, he shot and killed um, a young man named Ronald Nelson, and he was tried and convicted with second-degree murder. Shortly after, the Nelson family retained a lawyer, 
Elmer Gertz to represent them in civil litigation against the, the officer. A magazine called American Opinion, a publication of the John Birch Society, ran a series of articles alleging that the existence of a communist conspiracy to, to discredit local police agencies and thus facilitate their replacement by a national police force that could more effectively implement, implement the dictatorship they planned to oppose on the country. The article further claimed the officer had framed uh, the uh, attorney, well, they, the, that the officer was fr 